All right, so I've been working pretty hard on this Quest system tutorial, and uh, I'm not ready for it just yet, but in the process, I took a little break, and I decided to stop and take a look at this NPC. We've got this wander behavior that's kind of buggy. Let's go ahead and check it out. Now, what'll happen here is, at some point, he's going to start kind of wigging out. Let's see if it happens. Usually it happens pretty quick, actually. I mean, I didn't notice it at first because it didn't happen immediately, like right now. So I might have to fast forward here. Okay, there we go. He's bugging out. I literally sat and recorded about five minutes and he didn't bug out. So it just shows that sometimes it doesn't happen. But you saw how he was flipping back and forth there. I wonder if he'll do it again. But, um, the, you know, this is just a bug in how the wander behavior is implemented and the way... Um, the code is written to get him to turn directions when he kind of hits the edge of that wander. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. And we're going to change this. So looking at the scene where I've got my NPC, I've got this NPC behavior wander script or scene. I'm going to open up this scene and let's open up the script. Now, what, what happens here, the reason why we're having this weird um, little bug is in our process, right, which happens every frame, we have this check to see if the NPC has wandered outside of the range that we've defined. And then if he has, we multiply his velocity in his direction by negative the one. The problem is, is, you know, maybe if it's a lower frame rate or things are just right, he can kind of get past that wander range by a large enough degree that even after he turns the other direction, he's still going to be outside the wander range. And then he just flips back and forth kind of uh, uncontrollably. And so we're going to fix that. And what we're going to do, I'm going to go ahead and comment this code out. And instead, we're going to implement something in our in our start function, which if you recall, we should probably rename this, but whatever. The start function just kind of goes through each phase of the of this wander behavior. Okay. And so what we'll do is we'll come down here in our walk phase, we choose a direction and it's a random direction. And then we set the direction and velocity, update the animation and direction that the, the NPC is facing, and just let it go for however long this timer chooses. Okay. What we're going to do is where before we were taking this, in fact, I'm going to go ahead and copy most of this. Um, well, let me just copy the if statement. Let me take this if statement that we were checking in the in the uh, process function. Instead of checking it there, let's just check it right here after we set and choose a direction. Okay, I'm doing this after we, we declare the direction because you'll notice we're declaring this, this variable uh, local to this function here. So... I want to be able to manipulate this direction, so I'm going to I'm going to do this check after we've already chosen one. Okay, so we're going to choose a random direction, and then we're going to do a check. If we're outside of our wander range, then we need to do something different. We need to change our direction um, because we may just pick one that sends us further outside the wander range. Right. The the whole purpose of having that that range on there is to limit how far the NPC will walk about before he turns around and is forced to come back. Uh, kind of back into that area. So we'll take we'll check here if he's outside that wander range and then instead of just flipping him and changing You know the direction and the velocity like we did here Multiplying those by negative one and then updating it instead of doing that What I'd like to do is we'll simply choose a new direction uh, And we'll choose the direction that uh, will most directly point the the NPC back towards the wander area And so here's how we're gonna do that. First of all, we're going to we know that if this condition is true, he's outside the area. Okay, so then we're going to get a direction to the area. So we'll call this dir underscore two underscore area, just like so. And this is a vector two variable. And this will be equal to the global position, right, of our wander behavior of our NPC, and then the direction two. And we just want the direction to uh, we are storing. It's been a while since we worked on this. So you'll recall that when we we have this original position vector two, and we store the original position of this wander when we begin. So that's what we'll get the direction to. That position is like the global center position of this wander area. Get direction to original position, just like that. Okay, so there we go. We've got a direction now. Now this direction is not going to fit with our cardinal directions up, down, left, or right. Okay, this could be, and will almost always be some sort of angle. So we don't want to use this direction we don't want to move in that direction, but we're going to use it to find the best direction. So then next, what we're going to do, and we did something very similar to this. In fact, I drew a lot of inspiration for this from the recent um, advanced AI uh, video I did for, for the pathfinding for our chase behavior. 
what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to collect the uh, dot products for the different cardinal directions based off of this direction to the area and find out which one is closest and then that's the direction that we're going to go that's the direction we're going to tell the npc to walk so we'll make a new variable that we'll call best directions and this will be an array of floats okay and what we'll do is we'll say for d in directions so we've got again let me just scroll up and look we've got this directions constant up here and these are the directions that we are picking from for the npc to walk so we're going to iterate through each of those so we'll say 4d in directions and then we're going to add what we're going to do is we're going to add this dot product of of each of these directions against our direction to area variable to this new best directions array so we'll say dot append a patented append we want to get the direction we're iterating over and then get the dot product using the dir to area okay now for those of you who didn't watch that previous video or who are unsure what this dot product is going to do is the more closely these two vectors align the d right these are both vector twos the more closely they align the higher the dot product will be and um the the less they align the lower it will be okay and so how that helps us then is we'll end up with an array here and let's go ahead and um once we once we do that let's go ahead and do this let's print the best directions okay and now if i run uh if i run my scene 2 here with, with this npc then once he goes outside of the area it should output something to the console here pretty soon there we go okay so we can see i'm gonna go ahead and stop the game actually we can see in the output that we've got a couple times that this has run and you see it gives us four numbers and some of them are negative right some of them are positive and so these correlate these numbers correlate with the direction so vector up seems to be the favored direction in these cases because it's the largest number okay closest to one in this case right and and so we know that we want to go up because that one most closely matches the direction to our um, our wander area okay and then actually in this third case you can see that the best direction is the second vector which would correspond to walking right okay so let's go back down to our code okay so we've got our best directions we will go ahead and comment that print or i'll just delete this print we don't really need that that was just for demonstration purposes so what we can do here is since we've determined a good direction we're going to override our underscore dir now keep in mind we're only running this code when we're outside the wander position and we get to this walk state so normally we'll just pick a random one and ignore this but okay so the direction is going to equal we're going to grab the direction and we need the index of the value that was highest right from this best directions and so here's how we're going to grab that. We're going to say best directions. And then we're going to say dot find. And what find is going to do is it's going to let us pass in a value and it's going to find the index of that value. So the, the, the variant, I guess, that we want to find is the best directions dot max, the one that has the highest value. Okay, so we're, we're saying take the value the variant that has the highest value of our best directions and find its index and use that index to get the direction that it corresponds to i hope that made sense so then all we have to do now is um when we run the game and let me just look at this real quick let me look at my scene so now when he goes outside the area um, and we're not printing anything so we won't know but he's never going to He's never going to jog back and forth because it, it will only happen once and then he'll walk for a second and a half or whatever, or half a second, and then he'll turn around and, and do it again. Okay, so that's going to remove that bug altogether. And essentially all we've done is just change the fashion in which we're we're addressing. We're changing when and how we're addressing the direction change when he leaves the wander area. Okay, so something that happens less frequently, a little bit more performant or a lot more performant. And, and a different method for picking that direction. We're not just picking the opposite. We're going to pick a direction that we think will get him back towards the wander area the quickest. 
Okay, so that's all there is for that fix there. And for those of you uh, sticking around though, I want to show you just a little bit of what I'm working on for this quest system. All right, so I've switched over here to um, my my kind of dev project for this AARPG tutorial series. So it looks just like the, the one that I use in the videos, but it's, it's a different version of the project. And I'm going to show you here what I've been working on is I've been dividing up the, the pause menu. I gave it a, a dark backdrop. I don't know if I'll keep that, but I'm dividing it up. We've now got a page for inventory and then I've got a tab for quests, which right now looks blank. And I've got a tab for system, which has save, load and quit and um, quit will quit to the you know, just quit the whole game. And I've got some debug in here because I don't have the system yet for interacting with the quest system in the game world. And so I built in some keys. I just hit one of my hotkeys, which added a quest to my list. And you can see now I've got the quest list. And when I highlight this quest, recover the lost flute. Mr. NPC wants you to get his lost flute. And we've got some um, little items that can be completed and checked off there. Let me go ahead and hit my test button again, which will give me another second example quest. Okay. I'm going to leave that and I'm going to complete a step on a quest. Once a quest is completed, it gets a completed high green you know, text here. But also there's an ability to check off the different steps in the quest, which I mean, this looks bugged because I marked this quest as completed, even though it has an uncompleted step. But, you know, bear with me there. And I'm just going to hit my test key one more time and show you that we've got another completed test. Just to this is just an example for me. It's testing that I can sort these quests how I want to. So any incomplete or in progress quests will appear first. And then the rest of the completed quests are going to be listed here in alphabetic order. Okay. For you to review. And then this has also been tied in with the save and load system. Um, let me go ahead and just restart the project here. And so we can see that I'm back to not having any quests, but if I come down here to load, I believe I've saved some and there we go. There's my inventory working. And over here in the quests, you can see I've got, I've saved this, the status of all of these quests as I've been testing. And so that's as far as I've gotten. It's been a UI. There's a lot, of, there's maybe not a lot, but there's code in the background to handle this quest management system, as well as integrating it here. And so the last thing I have to, to tidy up before I'm ready to show this and create the tutorials is, is nodes and ways to interact with the quests in the real world. So for example, um, allowing the dialogue system to either initiate or advance a quest. And likely there will be other things like maybe entering an area or defeating a boss. We need a way for the quest to be advanced or completed. Okay, so that's what I'm working on. I appreciate everybody who's following along. I hope I can get this ready this week so I can start recording it next week. That's the next big goal for me to get out is this quest system because I really want to wrap up the I really want to wrap up the action RPG tutorial series with that. Um, I will be building other things that we can add to it in the future, but they will be, you know, I'm not going to be strictly doing AARPG videos in the future like I have been up to this point. Um, so give me a comment if that looks interesting. If you've got questions, um, as always, like the video if you found it useful. These things help my channel grow. And subscribe if you want to see what's coming next. And uh, thank you to all of my Patreon supporters for, for helping me continue in this journey. And if anybody wants to join along, go ahead and find the link below and, and join one of my communities and join me in Discord. And uh, let's keep learning together.